Maylene and I have been in the fashion industry for over 18 years. I have also started my own brand called Dragonfly. I haven't done a new collection since about three years because I started working as a freelancer for a New York company. And so that gave me very little time for anything else. But now I'm here to give you some advice and tips on how to start your own fashion brand. I will be tackling a topic that will break down and help you reach your goal. So grab a pen and a pad and whatever else you may need and make yourselves comfortable. Let's get started on this week's topic, product development and how to organize it from concept stage to sampling. Now, before we delve into it, don't forget to like, subscribe, share with friends and anyone else who could benefit from this or any of my other videos. I would totally appreciate it. And feel free to ask me any questions down below. This is not a super detailed video showing you exactly a step-by-step -step of this process, as every individual or team may take a different approach to the creative process of fashion design. However, there are many general steps that designers adhere to between the initial conceptualization phase and the completion of a wearable garment or accessories. Plus, it also depends on the product you're looking to manufacture. So, I would simply like to share an easy guideline of what could be included in the process as well as talking about finding manufacturers, factories, vendors, and such. Becoming a designer in the fashion industry takes passion, time, research, and practice, and a lot of hard work, especially when starting your own business. Here are six points that can help you organize your development in order. Number one, discussing and writing down expectations. Quite important, this one. Create a brief document detailing pertinent information that fits the style, values, budget. The budget is definitely crucial. And constraints of the brand and for that particular collection. And it should include any other necessary data a designer needs before starting production. All the expectations should be assessed and decided on, such as how many pieces in the collection, key fabrics, theme, a time and action calendar, and such, all right? Finding inspiration is number two. Pull inspiration from resources like music, art, history, architecture, and fashion trends. I talk about this in my How to Create a Moodboard video. Check it out. I'm very visual, so I like to print out ideas, um, looks, and maybe textures, prints, etc., and stick them on the wall, then slowly eliminate and consolidate to have it at its most cohesive and concise look that I had envisioned. Here is where mood boards would also be produced or at least prepared. Number three, sketching ideas. Sketches present an idea in a tangible form, giving the image another viewpoint. Sketches are the foundation of design. These flat drawings can communicate the technical element of an idea, including seams, sleeve lengths, uh, overall length, fit, shapes, uh, and more. Eventually, these sketches will become a blueprint uh, for the manufacturer or pattern maker to make a sample. You can learn more about this in my how to get started on a tech bag video. So take a look at it. I also like to create a line sheet, which is a chart that includes all data in one place, whether on Excel or Illustrator with all sketches and their information for easier reference. This would be an overall overview of all styles. Keep in mind the silhouettes of a garment for those who are designing apparel. Silhouettes can be an easy aspect to overlook in a two-dimensional sketch. So being mindful of silhouettes impact throughout all design stages are imperative. Number four, choosing fabrics. You need to select the right type of fabric to express your design ideas adequately. Sometimes the fabric will dictate the type of garment you will make because of its drape and such. Other times, the type of silhouette will inform you the fabric selection. Good designers research the weight, thickness, and construction 
of their fabric selection to better understand how they fit, move, and drape on a human body. We're on to number five, picking colors. Color is a powerful tool for transmitting a mood. It's often the first thing people notice when they look at any garment, accessories, and such. Designers must choose the right color palettes to ensure they depict the appropriate mood and story and has some relevance to that season's forecast. Number six, sampling and prototyping. Eventually, you will finalize your sketches and add measurements or what we call specs. You might know uh, a little bit about it yourself and add it yourself, or you might hire a technical designer who knows about pattern making. Either way, it's essential to have at least a basic idea, especially if it is a more complicated silhouette. Another way is to have the pattern maker make the first sample to send to the manufacturer to follow or you can send the tech pack complete with details, colors, fabric, specs to have them make one. But be mindful that samples cost a lot of money, so don't go nuts making them in all colors and sizes. Just pick one sample size. This product sample marks the first time you will see the garment in a three-dimensional form, which you can fit, as I mentioned, revise and edit as needed. Also, here's where you can decide about construction, trims, details, and stitching, and how they fit into your overall story. Now, depending on the scale of styles you plan to produce, I highly recommend to test out some of your garments. I love doing that. Every time I produce something, especially in the sample stage, I put it on, go out with it, see how it feels when I sit, when I move, when, <laughs> when I do all sorts of activities, so that I know the durability of it, the quality of it. So yeah, I highly recommend that you test out your own product first. If you're producing on a large, large scale, then you do have quality control.